Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I wanted to show you how you can decorate the books that you fold. Um, there are several different ways, so I was just going to show, go through those with you. So this is a book that I've been working on, and it is a shadow fold, which I do not have a video on yet, but hopefully I'll get one in soon. So the shadow fold is a cut and fold. It's also 180, which I have not done a video on, but I will. And so I was just showing you how I colored the book so you can tell from here, see how it's dark compared to that. So there's several ways to color the pages. So this particular way, and I'll show you here on this. So I'm just using a strip of black paper and I'm putting it up inside those folds right there. And so that way, whenever you look at it, it's black on both sides. This is honestly one of the easier ways to color pages, I think, and the most, um, or the fastest way also to do so. So let me show you exactly what I do for that. So I got some black paper. Uh, I know some people use cardstock, but with everything that's going on, I had to just find something whenever I went grocery shopping in my local Walmart. And so all they had was, with the full pack of of black was black paper, not black construction paper, cardstock. So I just take the paper, I have a little paper cutter here, and I just cut it into strips. Just like that. I'm just going to do a couple of them just so you can see how this works. And I'm using my little, this little measuring guide on here for them to be uniform. Okay, so very simply, you just take the book, and then you have your tape right here. And then you just go to the next area. This may be kind of hard to tell, but there's all of my tabs. And so I just take the paper and just put it underneath these front tabs right here. Then you just tape it down. Just like that. Let me do another one. So again, you just stick that in there and then just tape it down. So depending on how deep you do your tabs, um, you might be able to have paper that's not as as wide, but I got like 50 sheets for $3, so it's not a big deal, and I get plenty of these out of those three sheets. So that's that way of doing it. Um, like I said, it's fairly easy. It's probably the fastest way to do so. And it looks really good. Okay. Now another way that you can do it is you can color. With Sharpie markers. Now this one is a combo fold. I do have a video on that so if you want to see how to do a combo fold you will. Um, I will probably end up redoing this book. Uh, the pages were a little bit too thin for me so I'm just look at this as a throwaway book. So you can use a Sharpie. So if you're using a Sharpie the parts that you're coloring, if I can get that, are these parts that are fold it in. That's what you're coloring. And so really the best way to do that is to unfold those tabs. Just like that. And then you're going to go in and color it. Now you need to put something underneath it so it doesn't bleed through the other pages. You see it better. And so right where those folds are, you're going to color both sides of it. Now if you don't want to see a whole lot of white, then you might want to make these pretty thick, these marks. So 
So if you notice that goes fairly quickly also. And then once you do that, you'll go and fold them back and then stick that page back down. So it's fairly easy also, fairly quick. However, um, you do go through a lot of Sharpies and the other issue is, is that it can bleed. So if you see right here on that little end, it kind of bled over onto that, onto that tab. So not that that makes a whole lot of problems with it, but it can whenever you're looking at it from certain angles. So if you can tell right there, there's some marks that have come out. And then right here on all these pages, I actually made an accidental mark. So it's a good way to get a whole bunch of different colors in there, since you can get just about any color Sharpie. But I personally am okay with it, but I don't like it as much as the paper, just because of the bleeding. So the other thing you can use is washi tape. This is an example of washi tape. I actually got this from Hobby Lobby in a pack of, I think, five. Um, and so it's just these little colored tapes. They look like that. This one happens to be glitter, which is the reason why I got it. And so you can actually go through and instead of using the markers, You can put washi tape on the tabs. So you're going to actually cut this washi tape. This you can lay it down, and then you'll cut it at the end. So you're going to put it right there on the edge. just like that and then you'll just go and fold that tab over you might want to press on that tape pretty good right there so then you have the same effect it's just with tape and this is actually pretty good too because then you can get like the different um, glitter tapes or you can get the foil tapes those type of things so it's a, it's a whole different look I would just say with the glitter ones, they are a little bit thicker than the other washi tapes, and so it will kind of bulk your book out a little bit. So that's another option. Then just going back to the washi tape, this is another book that I've already worked on. So I used washi tape several different ways on this book. So what I just showed you is what I did with like these stars right here. The exact same way. But if you notice, down here on these three, I didn't exactly push it in so it's popping out and if you notice this book it's not hard to tell like that it got pretty thick just from putting the washi tape before that it was probably more like that but it came out a little bit more which I actually like I enjoy the books that are a little bit wider but on this one I did the same concept as the black paper that I just showed you but instead of using the colored paper, what I did is I put the washi tape on that paper. Right there. And so then I was able to put it in there like that. It was a little bit time consuming, but I liked, I wanted it to be more defined out here and I wanted it to have the sparkle tape. So that was my option. So basically all I did, just to show you, is if you take the strip like that, and then get the washi tape. So then you put the washi tape right on the paper. So however much paper you need. And just like we did on the book, you just do it on the paper and then you'll just put it under the tabs like the other ones. So those are different ways that you can do it. Um, I'm sure there's other ways than that, but those are the, the three that I've actually used. Um, and they all have their advantages and disadvantages. It just kind of depends on the book and what design you're going for. Now let's talk about the outside of the book. So you can just leave it as is. Like this book, for instance, it's already black. 
Um, I'm not going to mess with it. I'm not going to cover it with anything. I might paint over or put um, paper with Mod Podge glue right here over the spine. Okay, so for the outside of the book, I prefer to use fabric. So I just, I got this fabric at Walmart months and months ago actually. It comes in a little square. Um, they're called single fat quarters. They're only a couple of dollars if you can find them. Like I said, I got this a while back, so. Um, and then I just iron the fabric out and you won't use the whole thing for a book. So I use Mod Podge glue to put it on and it's just, it's the easiest way to do it. I've tried to use a hot glue gun before, but it makes the little bubbles underneath and um, I just didn't like that. So this is to make sure that it's smooth. Okay, so what I do is I just kind of put the book up there and make sure I'm leaving an overlap. I like to have quite a bit of an overlap. But I make sure there's an overlap and then I'm just going to cut the fabric. Okay, so once you have your fabric cut out, and it's really pretty simple. It's just gluing it down. I like to put the glue on the book first on one end. Okay, so once you do that, you're just going to lay the book down. Just kind of center it where you'd measured it before. And there you go, you just lay it down. So then I like to take it and put some pressure on it. Make sure I kind of push out any bubbles if there are any. Kind of put it in that crease there. And then I'll just kind of go from there. finishing this up I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what this pattern is so I actually since I know I'll have the questions I actually met a lady on Facebook that makes patterns and I sent her a picture and then she was able to make a pattern for me and I did pay her for it so you can find pattern makers out there if this is an option that you want so you can give them a clear portrait and it can make it, the portraits do better as shadow folds, which is what this one is. And this particular book that I'm doing is of my sister, Chelsea. She passed away about three months ago um, from complications due to muscular dystrophy. So this is the picture that she actually had on her Facebook profile. I know I sent it to the pattern maker, she went ahead and got that for me and put her name on it. And so this book is actually for my mom. Um, and what's funny is I bought this fabric several months ago what, before she passed away. And I didn't know what I was gonna use it for, but I really, really like llamas. And so I went ahead and got it. And I didn't realize what I would be needing it for later on. So she also likes llamas. And this color of this fabric actually happens to be one of her favorite colors. So my mom found a table at a thrift shop and I brought it home and I painted it, her favorite colors. And we actually found a little, a little door pull for the handle of the drawer that's a llama. And we found that at Hobby Lobby. And so that little table that my mom bought is to put my sister's ashes on her urn and then some other things. And so I told her I wanted to fold her book and to use this fabric to cover it so she can put it on top of that table. So she does not know that I've done this. She doesn't know that I was going to do a portrait. So it will be a surprise for her. Um, 
and I think it'll be a good one. And so, if that's something that you're interested in, just find you a pattern maker and send them a picture, then they can do that. Like I said, I'll do a video of a shadow fold here soon. It's really easy. Okay, so then on the edges, same thing. I'm just going to glue those down. So for the corners, this is what I do. I don't know if it's the right way to do it or not, but it's the way I do it in order for them to fold down easier. Some of this you need to play around with it a little bit, but I usually go ahead and put glue the corners down first. And then I'll fold over the rest. Okay, so after you do that, you'll have these little strips. You want to go ahead and cut those off just so they don't get in the way of the flap that's going over. And then you'll just glue down the edges. So you're not going to want the edges being shown right here so you can do several things to cover that um, you can just get a piece of cardstock and cut it to size and then place it over it but I'm kind of one of those people that why well, do that whenever you've got paper right here so I just like to use this now you do have to cut it off so you can just put that right in there and glue it down and then it covers all the edges
you can choose to just leave it like this or you can actually embellish it with some other things if you wanted to you can use stickers um, there's one book that I've put fabric over and then I got little gems and jewels and put it on top of the fabric so you can do that and then there's also the choice of putting a ribbon you can keep the book the width that you want to keep it in order for it to stay a certain way so I did actually find some llama ribbon and this was from Dollar Tree but with the ribbon you want to use hot glue and so I usually set the book up and decide kind of where I want it I'm gonna put it along the bottom right there so then it's not covering anything okay so very simply I'm just going to figure out kind of how wide I want it I think that's about good and then I'm just going to measure how much ribbon I want around the book okay so once I cut the ribbon I'm going to want the seam to go in the back of the book right here so I'm just going to take my glue gun I'm going to put a little bit of glue right there and glue my edge down okay then I'm actually going to want to put a little bit of glue just along here I'm not going to put glue along the whole thing but I want to make sure it's not going to go anywhere and before I completely glue this shut you do a lot of work on these books so you can sign it or some people I know have stickers made that they can put like on the back of the book that they made it um, and I'm probably not going to do that with this one, although I've thought about doing that. But I have started actually signing the books. So on page 222, yeah, I actually signed my name in it. Nobody's going to know it's there, but I do. Okay. So I'll just put a little bit of glue right there. to have to ship a book to somebody then even if it's shipped like this and they know whenever they get it and whenever they open it up it's just going to automatically open up if you can see to that point and so it'll look just like that whenever it's finished and sitting on somebody's shelf so I, I hope that my mom likes it I'm sure she will so anyway that's how I decorate my books now obviously the possibilities are endless you could even paint the cover if somebody's very artistic and can do painting and stuff like that. You can do whatever you want. Um, just like a book, you can pretty much do any pattern. You can pretty much decorate it however you want. And so a lot of times I'll just go to stores and I'll just look around and think, hey, that may look good on a book and then I buy it. So sometimes I'll specifically go and look for a book. But anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. I will be putting in some more instructional videos, especially how to do the 180 fold and the shadow fold like this. And I hope everybody is staying safe. I hope that all is well with you and your family. And I'll see you next time. God bless you. Goodbye.